Don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can actually see in this thing. Look at that. Turn it off like the vibes more. Yeah. So we have that fending tube right there in a way. That needs to be uh, worked around. So we're gonna do a work around. We're gonna use something about use, use a little force. I think about that size right there might do the trick. It's possible. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, one of two things. It bends or it breaks. Well, I don't think it broke. It's definitely got a bend in it now. Mm -hmm. Can we bend it the right way? It appears that we uh, maybe have made an inferior design change. Oh, well, there went in there, but that's still not all the way in there. Well, now it's probably hitting on the other side of the tank. So we had to put like an S bend in there? Yeah. Oh, I can see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it appears that it is touching right in here. Yeah, right past that spot there, we need to bend it. About how many inches is that? Yeah, I don't know, about that far, I guess. You can almost see in there. Almost. I'm thinking that's somewhere like in this area here, because it looks like it needs to be bent back right there. See, that's just the way we bent it. I don't think I want to bend it back right there. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm thinking that maybe I'll just bend it right here. I get this nice mandrel press right here. You like it? Sure. Very custom. Yeah. I'll just make a little S in there. Thick wall tubing seems to be bending. <laughs> well, the formerly thick wall tubing. Yeah, somebody cut it accidentally in the mill. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be helping in any. Appears to have the same issues. Mm -hmm. See no gain at all. It looks like it's got clearance to the tube, but obviously it doesn't. We have clearance there now. I think it's the, the ridge maybe right in there. It's, it's hitting a tube, I'm sure. The problem is we bent it so much. It's probably hit a little bit further down or something. It's such a precision thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's about four and a half inches, or three and a half inches from the center line. That's way up here. So we're going to bend it up. We're two and a half inches we're bending. It's right there. Well, there's the problem. A little lip in there. Huh? You see what's hitting the tube in there? Mm -hmm. The scale? Yeah. We need about a quarter inch of offset. We didn't give it a quarter inch, we gave it eighth of an inch. So we need more. <laughs> Well, I might start making a break now. 
It's a good thing we know how to weld. Appears to get some non mandrel wrinkles in there. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe that non mandrel bender would wrinkle like that. But. I thought we had a very custom uh, offset. Much offset here, I need to be bent more in here. That's why I tried to move it up higher, but it didn't bend there. I'm gonna have to try harder. I'll make it bend over there. There's more than one way to screw this thing up. Starting to look worse. <laughs> more and more custom. That's got some serious bend in it now. Straight. 
that a little bit further, huh? Just pretty flexible. Mm -hmm. yeah, looks pretty even. Well, we're definitely getting a serious offset now. <laughs> Almost goes back to where it was. Not quite. Have running into this thing right here. Well, they had this whole area where it's all bent in. This whole thing is all bent right through here. So I have to do a little bit of metal work and bring it up. Hitting heavy in that area. I think there's a gap in the tube, it's just it's this whole thing's all bent in, we're hitting on. There's got some slight damages in places. Alright, so I'm about to do a little fine-tuning right there. Fred the bar here. Here's to get more oil capacity. <laughs> Fix that. Push it in now. Some precision channel locks? Yeah. Just bring up a little at a time. Fine tuning. After 
all that work we had when we gained a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, it's about the exact same spot. Yeah, we're actually a little bit higher in the back. I think that's because we're hitting on the tank now. It doesn't fit in there. And we're right up on the. I think it's pushing up here in the top corner. I don't know if you can see in there, but it's. I can't get around the, the corner. Tube is it. It's in there. See the bolts actually hitting on the tube in there. Can you see the bolts head way up in there? Mm. Yeah. It's actually hitting on the bolt, not the tube where I bent it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not gaining too much. And then this goes right along the base. It's hitting right on the inside of the tank where I bent it, so it's rubble across that. So it shouldn't really vibrate that much because it's going to be beating against everything. Yeah, I have multiple, multiple contact areas. Well, that's good because we're worried about this breaking out. Mm -hmm. so if it's hitting right along this whole edge, it's not going to be vibrating very much. So it's hitting between the tube and that. It's kind of jammed in between this tube and the top of the tank. So it should be all vibration. It almost looks stock now, see? Mm -hmm. Close. All right. I'm gonna mix the tube. Yep. I broke my straightening tool. Loud noises. There. Semi straight. Yeah, it's almost like perfectly straight. Look at that. Okay, you missed a big flaring tool. Too bad. We found out this don't work for squat. This cutter here. Whatever it's supposed to do, it's not a cutter. It's a deburr tool. Yeah, okay, whatever. It, isn't, it doesn't do a damn thing. Okay, we want to put a bend in this. If I do this run enough times, I'll figure out how to do this. We have this precision uh, angle device here. I think it's close. Um, I don't know. Maybe. They brought the fuel tank with them, did they? Mm, where was it sitting? In the back where it's running your heads. Mm. Yeah, well, if it don't work, we'll just have to work on it again. I'm thinking that we need to cut it down in here someplace. Something around right in here. You think this part will work? Well, we'll see. Ooh, it went too far. I never understood what these little... Uh... The rollers? Well, no, there's a little space in there because the oh. if you tighten down the cutter, it doesn't go on those spaces. It goes on the, the center part. So it's like, I don't know if you like to even cuts around here. <laughs> okay, if that goes into there, I'm thinking that we're going to be close. We might need a little extra length because of the angle. We'll give it a quarter inch. Ooh, this works a lot better than the old one I had. 
Yeah. Good, pre -trip. Yeah, see, so that's what you do at this part. You stick this part in the end there, and you turn it. Yeah, but it doesn't do anything. No. Oh. it. Well, maybe it was meant for copper tubing. Or well, it's really low grade. I have this thing right here. That yeah, deburring tool. That actually does work, kind of. I was thinking about going getting my reamer and reaming it out. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure I will be doing that here in a minute because that's not giving you the results you're looking for. I want to make sure I have maximum volume of flow. No chance of flow restriction at all. Look at that. Why'd you cut it so long? Because uh, somebody said they needed a little bit extra. Oh. If that's the one that goes to the front of the tank, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be enough room. <clears throat> I'm thinking it might need a little more room. I'm trying to figure out I'm going to make it do all these fancy bends. All right, we'll go get some tools. Here we have the, the fuel tank and how it'll sit in there. They're just a little bit long. Yeah, she looks pretty good. Yeah. It's not going to just run into the front of the tank there? I don't know. It might. <laughs> Probably. What's your point? Well, why'd you flare it like that? Because it was a really cool tool. Oh. We can flare it again. This time shorter. How short can we floor it? Floor it. Get on the flaring tool. Fair behind you. So this is the part you missed earlier. Oh, this is very important. The biggest thing is we have to get it lined up. There's a lot of room in there for flaring. <laughs> we shall see. It'll make it. Right. How much angle we got with this thing? This thing sits about here. This comes up about here. So we're gonna have to have a little bit of a little more of a turn in there. Now we got to bend it before we flare it. We, we have to. We're going to do both here. Okay, so we're just going to go a little bit further. So we just go to 90 degrees. Look at your finger in there; it might hurt. I bet, I bet it would bend your finger. This is going to bend in that too. That's custom. There's that straightener again. Yeah. Custom straightening tool. Yep, kind of kind of straighter now. Okay, so now we get to cut that off. That's 90 degrees. Yeah. I think I went too far because I don't like that. It might have to be that far because this goes right here. So theoretically, that goes right to there. So yeah, we're gonna have it like that. You know, this appears to be slightly too long. Now I got a feeling I got cut off. Hmm. It appears if I cut it off right where I flared it, hmm. we can have room for another flare. Okay, so we go back and cut that off right there with a chop saw. All right. Now we're back. We've shortened it up. This is my whole opening tool here. Mm -hmm. A little more precision at that piece of crop. It's a pretty exact piece of uh, precision tooling there. A lot better than this piece of crop. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
appears to have been deburred and shortened slightly. Where's that go? Extra parts. Okay, so if you shove that in as far as it goes, pinch your fingers in the middle of the thing there. Mm -hmm. That's how you know it's working. Yeah, I can feel it. You tighten it up until it gets tight. It's a little bit too long. Turn the light on, you can see better. And you go like that with it. And now we're flaring. How much do you want to go? Well, as far as you want to go. It hasn't stopped yet. And now the camera can't see anymore, so. Me either. Oh, there's plenty of room for more, but that's that's enough. Okay. It appears to have a massive amounts of flaring on there. Yep. And then when the air, when the spray comes out with that massive volume of return line on this piece of crap on the bike, mm -hmm. it won't just dribble on the floor. It might actually spew out. Spray out. We're going for fire hose. Yes. And that's going to be right in that general vicinity there. Yep. Maybe. Okay. Could, appears to be maybe slightly too tall. But we're not sure about that just yet. It appears that we might have to put like an S bend in here. So I'm thinking of a bend. You know, maybe a little bit further down than that. I know we have about a quarter inch of gap at the top of the tank, so that should put me pretty close to the top. Yeah, it's about the same spot. Get another mark over here. Okay, now we're really bending it. This is where the mass confusion comes in? Yes. There's a bend line someplace. There's a bend. Okay. I think I'm backwards already. Uh, let's see. That's the, I'm confused. Yep, just like that. So it needs to go this way. It needs to go over here. Yep. Can't see my mark now. Oh well, hopefully we're close. Okay, how's this work again? Uh, yeah, whatever. No, uh, these are no. We're you know, doing precision work here. I went too far, so we know it's precision. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me put it back in. Someone has another mark. There it is. I found it. Uh, theoretically, if we go the opposite direction. We should be close, right? Well, theoretically. There's a lot of theories in this place. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guarantee we'll, we'll have a, a uh, exact... Oh, that's, that's pretty close. It appears that we went too far, but I already knew that. But it does line up here at the bottom and at the top. And this gives us extra clearance here, but we kind of needed it more here. We also need an S bend from here to here to dog leg it over. Or we just rotate it like that, and in the case, which case we're wrong. But it does give us the clearance needed here, though. Yeah, well, we'll just. Well, does it matter if it shoots towards the inside of the tank? Because there's more room over there. No, it's rubbing on the tank already. No, we're just going to lightly. I have this massaging tool over here. Yes, the uh, soft press massaging tool. Yeah, about that far. Which way do we need to bend it? This way. This way. You notice know, this time we're using that precision yeah. non crimping. Yes, the uh, mandrel. 
is what, is what we are using. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So now we have dual S bins in our precision tubing. And did we do it right? Because it seems to be wrong. Did it get worse? Mm. Maybe. It appears that we went the wrong direction. That would never happen. No. Not here. Well, see, that's, that's part of the theory. If we do it wrong one way, we'll know the other way is the correct way. That's Unless we do it wrong that way, too. That's actually a theory also, though, because we've done it wrong several times in a row before. So. Okay, this time it needs to go this direction. That's the way we've been it the first time. No, that's right back where I started. I'm going to sneak up on it a little bit, though. Maybe it won't crimp the line too much. This is our reverse flow line, so... Okay, so this time we go that way. Closer. It is? Here, it's closer. Oh. Sharp. Let me put that flare over there. I bet you that's crimping a lot. Oh yeah, that's doing a wonderful job. Yeah, that's really doing a good job there. Yeah. The soft massage uh, massaging tool is. It's not the softest it could be. No, but it's getting close. It's almost like usable. Good thing this is going to be inside the tank where nobody can see it. Until they look in the fill hole. I don't think they'll see it then, but they might watch the video though. Then they will know the kind of work we do around here. But once it's all done, they're not going to know exactly which tank it is. Because they never know. We may have more than one of these tanks floating around. Look at that. That is almost like it's made to fit in there correctly. Which point. Look, it's even got the same... Same indentions and dimples and yep, I mean, there you go. I was like duplicating yeah the previous design. Those are uh, for better oil uh, flow. Okay. Now we only got the problem is actually the length looks pretty good now too, so that's why I made it extra long. Yeah. Okay, now we gotta see if that'll work. Okay, I gotta get me a. I'm gonna get me one of them fancy holding tools. Fancy holding tools. Oh, okay. Yep. I was. I was expecting that or the uh, twisty tie we dropped earlier. Precision. And we're back with the precision rubber bands. Look at that. There's a lot of folks out there that I'm pretty sure probably in this day and age, don't don't know where to get rubber bands. Where did you get your rubber band? Uh, the postman gave them to me when he gave me some packages to rubber band together. All right, so the postman is where you get rubber bands nowadays. That's right. This doesn't quite fit. Slight interference. It appears that it might maybe be too long. That's strictly unknown though at this point. My guess is it could possibly be that problem. Because it's, it's invisible. Yeah, it's, 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 I can see it going up, but I can't see where it yeah. goes to. Yeah. So I'm assuming that we're probably an eighth of an inch off on this dimension. 
And luckily, I know how to take care of that problem. I would, I would bet we have the tool directly in front of us. It resembles this. It, it very well could. This is a newer version of the tool, but I got the old one over there in the drawer. It takes more than three turns to cut it. Okay, so that's about an eighth of an inch. See, that's why they put those grooves in there to screw it all up. See. Hmm. Not to mention the twisting action of the, this as I'm trying to hold it. Looks like we're cutting about three sixteenths off and not an eighth. Well, we just wanted to make sure. It almost came off. Perfect. Now we need that precision uh, deburring tool. Step it. Stage one. Stage two. I think this is a five sixteenth reamer. Mm. Now, if you use power tools, it might go quicker, but it. It also might wrap you and then wrist a couple times. And then all your precision bends would be for nothing. Uh oh, it appears that it's going in. So that was stage two, and then the final stage is deeper. What about filing? All right, so this will be stage three. Internal deburring, and then we'll do some external deburring. I'm gonna have to flare it to make it tighter. Yeah. And that's the phone at 1155. No, it's 1055. Oh. 1057. 1057, all right. Yeah, somebody wants some parts. Hello? Okay, so we, we shorten it up a little bit. Use those uh, precision holding tools and once again that you get from the postman. And now we appear to uh, going all the way. Going all the way in. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that, that was apparently just enough. I was doing a precision job. Okay, I can see the uh, curve. Case oh, I can see the front of the hole over there. Yeah, it's going to blow right on to the front of that gas tank. So we're not painting the bike white because that part might get warm enough to... It's about uh, a quarter inch away from the edge of yeah, the tank up in here. Because yep. we paint the bike white, the uh, heat from that may discolor the white paint. What about the lead? Eh, well, you see the lead's going to already turn the paint colors, I'm sure. Yeah. Especially because nowadays paint isn't lead based like the paint was in this time frame, I'm sure. No, this is just plain lead, it's not lead paint. No, no, but I'm sure the paint that they used in this era was also a lead based paint oh, that I'm probably sure, uh, I'm sure it was. did not react to the base lead there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do a, another trim up here. Now the top of the tank is right along in this area, but we do need to put an S on it. Down in here. Need just, just enough to make it. So maybe we'll do a better job this time, but probably not. Well, it can't do any better because it's got to look the same. I'm thinking like maybe right in this area, area right here might be a good spot. At least for an initial uh, go at it. Well, we've already, we know that it is trimmable. It's terminal? Trimmable. Oh. That's almost like the same thing, isn't it? Sure. It can be whatever you want it to be. Almost like a still in here. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, it, it appears it has copper inside of there, so. Copper treated. That's yeah. already got a bend in it, too. Look at that. Oh, yeah, custom. I'm thinking that might be the right angle, too. Very important. 
part of the job here. So stage one. I think I'm gonna go cheat though. Oh. Can you use some power tools? Oh, holding okay. You, use your massaging holding fixture? Holding fixture. So it's a multi-use tool? Yeah. It even spins. Oh, now we do it. There's almost like nothing in the way around here. No. I mean, I think this is the most I've seen the workbench cleaned off in a while. Well, actually, it's been a half a day cleaning it. Glad I, I noticed. Yeah. YouTubers out there, I'm, I'm sure if they, you know, reel back to some of the older videos, they, they could probably uh, notice also. But they have to watch all the older videos. <laughs> Every one of them. I'll have to figure out which one's older. Yes. <laughs> and then they too, once they've watched all the videos, will then, know. Then they won't care. Yeah. Well, they've probably already at that point forgotten what they watched all the videos for in the first place, but... They will learn so much that it won't matter. Or been put to sleep. Well, if they get put to sleep, they uh, they surely just didn't understand. They should have watched the cat videos instead. Yeah, or uh, one of those ones about the uh, screaming goats or something. Ooh, that's a good one. It is. It's, pre it's pretty good. You you yell at the goats and they. Uh, Faint or something like that? I don't know. Yeah. Clico. Okay. Didn't know what that was? Uh, not from the back side. Just He's going through Clinko my special fashion. tool area right here. Well, there's my acid brush. There, now we know where it is. Yep. We still don't know where the wire brush is yet, but found the acid brush. Yeah, we might not put that, we might not remember what that was, but no. if you notice there was a Clico. Oh, see, I, I missed that part in there. Okay, so now we, uh, I'm even doing it backwards yeah, too. Yeah. Or was I doing it backwards? No, I was doing it right. So here's what Clicos are, they go in holes, mm -hmm. we'll cheat them And then there. they hold all together while you tack it up or yeah, go like put it that. faster. Yeah. It. Almost like a rivet, but more easily removed. Yeah, it's like a rivet, but different. Yeah. And of course I keep very good care of my Clicos, they're almost like rust free. Hey, yeah. that, that's more rust free than uh, some of the other stuff. Yeah, it's pretty good. We'll have to hit it up with um, some of the CRC See, right now, here. Now I know where that's at. I, I, was, I wasn't sure where that went to. Well, I'm glad I identified that right there. Yeah. It's right next to a uh, a break. Now I do know the twister. Switch. I do know the twister's over there on the wall behind us somewhere. Somewhere over there. Yeah, somewhere between those red, uh, somewhere between the yellow handles. There's a twister. Yes, I think I see it right there. Yeah. You notice I don't put them together though. Yeah. Well, that would be too easy. Yeah. It's right here next to the uh, Axtel uh, Made in the USA. And also a keychain. Yeah. Who has keychains anymore? Ooh, chrome chrome plating oh, keychain. Oh, Brown's plating. Wow. That only cost five thousand dollars. Wow. Well, you know, I'm, I think you got a deal. I thought so too. Okay, I thought everybody really powder coated things nowadays. Who, who chrome stuff? Some people still like chrome. <laughs> I'm in a caddy on myself. Okay, yeah. this one's already sorted. Got the bend we need. But if we put another bend in this area, and another one up in this area here, and somehow figure out to make a twist, maybe we'll use a tool this time. Nah. Well, we used the tool last time, and uh, they didn't work either. That only got us so far. Okay, I have no idea which way I'm going right now. <laughs> okay, I want to go down. right first. Yeah. Here, yeah, I'm going to make it easier for myself. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put a couple marks on here. Well, I don't know. What you, you, only you know what that mark means. So hopefully. That is all that matters. Yeah, that's. 
that means it goes right there. And that goes right there. And then you go, oh, about that far. Only slightly. That, that That's, uh, what, like 10, 15 degrees? I wasn't paying attention. I was just going for it. It looks appears I might have went too far. Ago. How much should I go? Yeah, it only looks to be about. Okay, I'm only supposed to go to one line, not extra. Oh, see, actually, oh, okay, I went yeah, that so far. One line. A little bit of extra just fucked it all up. It appears we're only supposed to go to one line. Now we have to flip it all around to get the other bend. No, no, we're going to flip it over here and make sure I did the correct thing. Here, see, look at that. All right. Okay, now we're going to have to go. I'm going to bend it like right. That's a, that was an error. And I think I'm going to bend it like right in here. And I'm going to bend it at this angle here because it's already laying against the thing. So we're incorporating that twisted bend in there from the get-go. Yeah, because... Uh, and I've already did it backwards because... <clears throat> I think I appeared that I marked it wrong. I have to mark it from this side. I think. We're bending it this way. This way, here. Oh, there's the mark. <laughs> Lost the mark. Okay. Just a little bit. 10 degrees, wasn't it? Or oh. whatever that first mark is. Yeah. We don't know what that mark is. I think it's it's got to be 15s, right? Okay. I'm not a tube bender. Well, it's 45 divided by 3. Which, which one's top? Which one's bottom? <laughs> <laughs> that one's bottom. Almost there. Oh, look at that. We, we oh. missed it by a ton. And the angle is way off. So you need to go more this way. This way and this way. It appears that it's in the air. Now if I compensate for that, I'll probably make it wrong. Yeah. Appears to be close. See, eyeball works better than numbers. They just get confusing with numbers. Well, who knows how much slops in this thing nowadays. Now look at that. See that? I compensated for it just right. But somehow we wound up being way too short. Oh, no, no. We no, didn't. you said Thanks because right of the here. tank. Yeah, because yeah, the tank goes like this. I, I didn't screw up. We're going to use that precision holding tool. Yeah. Adjustable. Mm-hmm. But only available from the postman nowadays, apparently. And maybe some certain dollar store. I have a heavy-duty one, too. Ooh. This one must have had all the bills, the taxes with it or something. <laughs> okay, so it appears that we did a better job the second time. Well, you know, a little practice, you know. Well, I think this is bent that way, too. Maybe that's something to do with it. It couldn't have been me. No, no. The materials shifted. It's, uh... See the top of the hose. You can see in there? I don't think YouTube can, but I can. See, there's the the back pipe 
right there, and you can almost see the top of it, but yeah. and the front one on there. Yep. And then you can see all the way down in there. Yep. Yeah, this. Oh yeah. Can't feel the front, but it's got clearance. I got pairs. I bought a quarter to three to five sixteenths clearance on everything up inside there. It's just perfect. All right. It almost looks like it belongs in there. It's almost a little too clean. But I can make it rusty if you want. <laughs> so that's rubbing right up against the inside of the gas tank, the oil tank. I bent this stuff all up. Took out a lot of the dent that was in here. It was all ruptured and bumpy. So I got all that pulled up. So and this is laying right up against the surface on the inside. So it shouldn't be vibrating too much. And we're still pretty close here. Pretty flat. So now we get to attempt to weld this without melting any of the lead. That ought to be fun. Oh yeah. So we're going to experiment with uh, TIG silicon bronze brazing first. And if that doesn't work, we'll have to wire feed it. But either way, we got to cool the tank off instantly right after we strike an arc. Because it appears that there's lead right here where my finger is and about right here on the other side. So we only got like an eighth of an inch. So I think there is going to be some lead melting, but hopefully not enough to make it leak. So that's ready to weld in. Now I need to make a drain plug right here. And then I'm going to have to make a, plug, a tube to go in here and plug off this hand pump feed hole right here. We're going to put the hand pump up in here back in here for show, but I have to plug up this hole down here so and up here so it won't actually have oil coming out of it. So, so I guess I'll make the bung next, figure that out. Yeah.